Collins & Co's not-for-profit conference, Be Empowered Through Knowledge, is designed specifically for the not-for-profit sector. Our speakers are experts in this sector and their practical approach provides not-for-profit board members and management with the opportunity to improve their skills and knowledge across a range of specialist topics. The conference also provides a great networking opportunity. So in a moment, we're going to welcome Gordon to the stage. So, thank Welcome, Gordon. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to use this mic. One, two. No. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh. So, if you've been downstairs and just seen me present, yes, it's the same one. But you know you've got homework, so there's no excuses now. Um, so, like I said, if you want to ask questions, ask questions, don't wait till it's all finished because I'm, what time do you want me to finish for? In 20 minutes? 40, okay. You saw how quickly I went downstairs. <laughs> okay, so, there we go. Quick disclaimer, um, don't copy, ask for permission, reference me if you're gonna use anything. And the most important part about disclaimer is Respect is part of your brand. So if you're going to copy something you're not going to, and you're going to claim it's yours, just think about what that says about your brand. Right. Everything I've got here, you can have. But as we go through the slides, it's, you'll probably realize that what you're about to write down on that piece of paper is going to be a lot more valuable than what you see on the screen here. Um, OK, so those that went downstairs, don't give it away. What is the wealthiest place in the world? This is an interactive discussion. <laughs> I know the answer, but I'll say Dubai. <laughs> Welcome. It's not HR. It's not HR, no. <laughs> Do I look like a HR person? You're really, really going to upset Jess now if you think I look like HR. So go on, what do you think is the wealthiest place in the world? Shout out. Here. Here? Right here, I like to say that. Um, your mind? I like the mind. What else? Okay, the wealthiest place in the world is actually the cemetery. Because in the cemetery lies lots of dreams. So I might go off center a little bit to what you saw downstairs. Um, in the cemetery lies lots of dreams that have died dreams. In the cemetery are lots of ideas, initiatives that have died ideas and initiatives. And what we're going to do today is make sure that no more dreams, no more ideas, and no more initiatives hit the cemetery. Now in doing this, we're gonna be quite confrontational in what we do, because it is about unconventional growth. And it's about unconventional growth because my own personal journey um, is about today, going forward, is about making sure every single day counts. Every single day, I go home, and the first question I ask myself is, would I employ myself today, and would I pay myself today? And that's a question you should ask yourself, your colleagues, leaders, senior leaders, those that you report through to, and those below. Would you employ yourself today, and would you pay yourself? Because to me, good enough is not enough. Good enough is not enough. I want to know you've done your best. And if every single day you do your best, I can't ask for any more than your best. Okay? If your best doesn't align with my goals and my expectations, then we need to have a talk about that. Because if you've done your best, I can't expect any more. So maybe it's me that's the problem, not you that's a problem. Bit unconventional, that. So this is me, Gordon Jenkins. I'm a bit of a square peg in a round hole. And let me explain a little bit about that. At school, I was a mathematical genius. I was good at will hunting. Um, but I couldn't read or write. So I was thick. And being thick meant I was in the Dunces class. And being in the Dunces class means out of 2,500 kids at school, 
I got bullied every single day for three years, three times a day. Because the system said, I'm thick. No, no, I'm dyslexic. The system is wrong because the system does not account for people that don't fit the system. And because you don't fit the system, it's you that's the problem. Well, sorry, no, the system's wrong, okay? The reason it takes three to four weeks to work out whether someone has got coronavirus right now is because we're still using methodologies that's in the past. There's a process today that we can use to identify whether someone has got coronavirus in about 30 minutes. The reason we don't do it is because it needs a completely different way of thinking in the health system globally. Now to me, trying to save a couple of million people's lives and thinking it a little bit differently is, is worth a go. So being a square peg in a round hole is not about being known, being aggravated, being, an, being someone who always causing aggro. It's just saying, well, I actually think there's a different way to do this. Maybe we could look at doing something better. Let's give it a go. As long, it sounds a bit daft now, as long as no one's actually going to die for this process, let's give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen will be, you know, I actually believed in your idea. Right? And when you think about an employee or colleague, you can give permission for them to try something. You know, what does that make them feel like? Um, we are like freebies. So um, when I do these conferences, I always like to give a lot away. So I'm going to give a lot of, a lot of things away today. But part of being in, just, just put your hands up if you're on the board of a not-for-profit. Okay, or if, and if you work in a not-for-profit but not on the board. And if you just got in here by mistake because you heard there's lunchtime and you thought there's a free lunch. Okay. <laughs> you did, I think you did the same thing last year. <laughs> um, so the thing about being in a not-for-profit is the same thing as being in an organization is we need to grow. And we need to grow in a very certain way. And often people say, well, I don't like going to network events. I don't like talking about what I do. Who doesn't like going to network events? Yeah, great. You know what? As I sit here, I'm a growth coach. And I'm going to tell you, and I see this when I see CEOs in the back when they cringe about this, don't go to network events. If you don't like going, don't go. Your time is too valuable. If you download that book, you'll get 30 other ways to network without going to a network event. That will be more powerful and more meaningful. Okay, it's actually on the back of your, um, the, you haven't got a copy, you haven't got a book, you haven't got a book, book. you've got nothing, you're different, unconventional, that's what we like to call it. So we're going to go through a process I call a three step process. Um, it's called a three step process because I can't remember five steps, seven steps or nine steps. I like to keep things really, really simple. It's as simple as that. There are actually 12 steps underneath this. There's been 12 steps underneath this for about the last 20 years. And I still can't remember every 12 steps when I do presentations. So I thought, we've only got 30 minutes, so I thought I might as well make it three steps. But these are the three most important steps because everything stems down from it. So the first thing we're going to look at is clarity. Okay? Often in business, when people come with a problem, the problem isn't often the problem, it's a symptom. When people ask you to do something, your perception of what they're asking you to do is often different to what they expected. But we think we, think we understand what we think someone's asking us to do. So clarity is really, really important. So in order to get clarity, there's a few things we need to do. We don't go chasing shiny objects. We are very, very clear on the journey we're on. We're all in this for cause. Right, we're all in this because we're on a board and that board is very passionate or you know, not for profit and that not for profit is very passionate to us or the business we're running is very passionate to us. And we're here for the long haul. And along that journey we're going to go, oh this looks really nice, that looks really nice. And we've got to remain focused because when you remain focused the conversations you're having with people stays consistent. When you start chasing shiny objects, you do it. I am a growth coach. I'm an accountability partner and a growth coach. I grow people and organizations very quickly. Don't ask me about your CRM system or your operations or your zeros or how to do your accounting or anything like that. There's experts to do that. That's not my expertise. Okay, my expertise is on people growth. Then when people talk to me, they know who to go to. No one ever, ever asks me, Gordon, my zero doesn't work or Gordon, how my CRM system doesn't work. Okay, so no chasing shiny objects. The second thing is we're here for the long term. Being, on, being 
involved in a not-for-profit, you're here purely as a custodian to leave a legacy for others. That's your job. That's, that, that's the only reason you're on the board, to leave a legacy for the others. So it's a long journey. Okay, along the way, there's going to be some really interesting milestones that we have to get, but it's a journey. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Okay? And you need to take the people on the journey with you. And then there's something called the human factor, the X factor. And what I often ask people when we sit down and we do this over a couple of days is, is what is your X factor? What's the thing that's going to pull, you guy, pull people to you rather than push people towards you? I can push people towards my foundation, but what's really going to draw people saying, I'm compelled, I want to be part of this, I want to be part of this. Right? We thought our pull was, I, I run um, a chair foundation called Longitude, which is a lung transplant research foundation. We research um, why lung, lungs, trans, transplanted lungs reject. Through that process, we actually know now how to better match not just lungs on the donor side, but how to match all organs. And that research has been translated not just in Australia, but across the world. Another research project that we, lo we looked at through, through lung transplant rejection was um, in ICU now, and to be an organ donor, for those that don't know, you can only be a donor if you die in ICU. Only if you, and only about 2% of people in ICU can actually be a donor. But up to recently, you had to be brain dead to be a donor. And you can be brain dead and heart dead now. That research was funded by our foundation. And that research is now world leading um, implementation for organ donation around the world. Okay, so we've translated, we've grown bigger. We were thinking far too small, far, far too small. So we know what our push is. We make translational research happen. We don't go to the laboratory, test it on a couple of animals, work, work in it. Right? Our, our, our thought process is we're going to test it, we get the results, bang, we implement it. And every single research we do has physical outcomes, has actual outcomes. Okay? We know, well, I know today, my wife Wendy had a double lung transplant in 2006. She's alive today because of the research we've done. Otherwise, she would have died six years ago, seven years ago. In fact, she probably couldn't have had the, probably couldn't have had the transplant if we hadn't done the research. Okay? So we're going to move pretty quickly on this. So what we're going to work on is a couple of exercises that is, if you just sit down and go through these exercises, we'll be here for a couple of weeks, but we're going to move really, really quickly. If I move too quickly for you, the beauty of coming to this conference is you get lots of freebies from me. Afterwards, we'll book it in our time and we'll go through it in a little bit more detail for you. So the first thing we're going to do is get clarity. We've got to know what the bloody hell we're up to. Okay, because if you don't know what you're up to and what your goals are, no one else is going to know. So the first thing you're going to do on your piece of paper is write down where you want to be in seven years' time. Are you going already? <laughs> <laughs> I've got I told you I'd call everyone out. <laughs> Write down where you want to be in seven years' time. Now, you can take this to be your organization, your role in the organization, or you can look at this professionally or personally. It makes no difference. Um, I have been in a session once where we had did it at an organization and I thought we were working for the organization, and then a couple of people said, you know, I want to go traveling, I don't want to be here, and the CEO's in the room going, I've just lost the whole team. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, I want to make an impact on a one million transplants in seven years' time. Um, and as I said to the group downstairs, I don't actually know if there are a million transplants in the world, but it's a big number, it's something I'm heading for. But what's really important when you wrote that, when you wrote that goal down is, when you get there, not if you get there, when you get there, what are you going to reward yourself with? What are you going to reward you with for having achieved what you set out to achieve? Are you going to go on a nice holiday? Are you going to buy yourself a car? Are you going to buy yourself a watch? Are you going to get a tattoo? Are you going to get married? Are you going to get divorced? Okay. And we're going to move this quickly. Has anyone wrote anything down for seven years? Okay, what would you write down? Create a, million, create, a found, create a foundation yeah. with them. And what's the foundation going to do? Uh, 
in the inner west. Okay, and what's that going to do with the inner west? When you say power the inner west, what do you want to do? And what does this advantage mean? Okay. So you want to have great foundation. So in seven years' time, it's making an, an accountable social and economic impact into the inner west. Okay. There. Pretty clear. You don't actually want a million dollars. No, what you want to do is create a foundation that makes a social and economic impact in the inner west. Okay? Because if you say a million dollars, I'm going to give you a million dollars. But, but what you don't know is, but, but what you don't know is, I've also got ten million dollars, but you only asked for a million dollars. So that's all you got. You've just put a cap on your growth. Make sense? You don't ever need to ask for money. People do not want money. You don't need money. What you want is an outcome, and you want people to be on that journey for an outcome. Make sense? Okay. So now that you've got your goal for seven years. What I want you to do, in order to be there for seven years, what you need to do in three years in order to get there in seven years. So for me, I want to have, make an impact on a million transplants in seven years. And in order to do that, within the next three years, we've got to implement something I call the Centre of Transplant Excellence. We've got to bring together the scientific, the research knowledge, the educational knowledge, the technology, um, the economic knowledge into one centre so we can share ideas, we can do translational research, we can do translational economic studies and create the centre of excellence that's going to be the best of the best in the world because the reason it's going to be the best in the world is because Victoria's actually got the best people in the world. The best people in the world just don't talk to each other because we be, we're working on a conventional system that doesn't allow people to talk to each other. So we're going to be unconventional, build a centre and it'll be a world. And in order to do that in three years' time, what you've got to work out is what you need to do 12 months from today in order to get what you want to get in three years' time in order to what you want to get in seven years' time. And in order for me to build the Centre of Transplant Excellence, we need to get the government buy-in in the next 12 months. And that's the state and the federal government buy-in. Does that make sense? So if we had more time, we'd go around the room, we'd break into groups, and we'd get really, really specific about this inner west thing. What does it actually mean? How does it actually mean? And remember, along the way, every time you reach a milestone, so there's none of this about if we do this, it's when we do this, because we're going to come on to something called courage soon. Along the way, you've got to reward yourself. You're not expecting a reward from anyone else. If you get that, that's a bonus. It's a reward that you're going to give yourself to pat yourself on the back. So um, we talked about rewards and talked about rewards downstairs. Um, every fortnight, um, Wendy and I, my wife, we go on a date. We do actually live together, we're just very busy. We don't do every week, because we can't commit to every week. But between 6 and 8.30 on a, on a Tuesday, we live in Richmond, where they go to Bridge Road or Victoria Street. We have dinner, we don't spend more than $80, including alcohol. We can, but we don't, that's, that's our accountability. The phones are off, my phone's on, because I've got a lifeline number on the phone, in the hospital. And we just talk to each other, we actually engage in conversation with each other. Yeah, when we finish the dinner, we get out, we get on the phones and go bang, 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 bang. But that's our investment. That's our reward for each other. The work that we're putting in over those two weeks is to have a date with each other. One of my clients, she goes, well, I don't have a boyfriend any longer. I finish with him. I said, yeah, but you're working really hard. He goes, yeah. So that means you're not spending time with your best friends. I said, yeah. I said, get your phone out. And she sent her WhatsApp and says, I'd like to go out for dinner with you because I've realized I'm working hard. I've not been your friend, a true friend. They've now booked it in their calendar for every two weeks. So a date night, accountability and clarity with their friends. So the one thing I want you to take away from today is invest your time in the people that really matter. So the next thing we're going to talk about is courage. If you don't believe in you, no one's going to believe in you. Okay, you've got to have the courage to step up and step down. Okay. You need to take the courage to do something and you need to own it. It needs to be a habit. Okay, it's a bit like right, going to exercise. I said downstairs, it's taken me 10 years to get into a habit to go to the gym. Right? Habits usually take 60, 70 days. That means that some people get a habit within three days, some people get a habit within 180 days, but the average is 60 to 70 days. How many of you have had people in your life that go no? Noahs. 
And how many of you under your breath go, they don't bloody know what they're talking about? Yeah. And how many people, when you've got something to go to, you go, I'm not going to say to that, talk to that person, because the first thing that comes out of the mouth is, no. Do you actually realise the first, that the human instinct to say no? It's actually a human instinct to say no. First thing, no but but. So we're going to work on something that's going to get rid of no. So after today, there's going to be no more noahs in your life. And if you come across a noah, you're going to know what to do with them. And yes, it does go into your personal life as well. So what I want you to write down is something that, as of right now, you're going to step up. Something that you need to have the courage to step up and do. All right. So I've been on a journey of a rebranding journey professionally and personally. And I step up. I am the expert in what I do. I am the expert in growth and people and growth and exceptional people and growth. I've had over 10,000 hours and 20 years experience in doing what I do. That's all I do. People, growth. I am the expert. I'm not arrogant. I'm bloody good at what I do. I'm not for everyone. Well, I don't suit every single type of person that wants to grow and break through their plateau, but I'm really good at what I do. I am the expert. I'm the expert for you. I don't know. And I own it. I own it on social media. I own it when I walk out. Every single morning, I get up, and this bloke in the mirror goes, you're bloody awesome. I own it. What I stopped doing is listening to the voices. Listening to those people that go, no, can't do that. Because I go, why? Well, it's just not the way we've done it. Yeah, but why? Well, because we can do it. What, we can do it or we don't want to do it? Why can't we do it? Well, because it's not a process. But we can make it a process. Yeah, but, but what? But then we've got to go through compliance. I go, okay, so we'll make it compliant. Yeah, but then we've got to go to the risk committee. Well, okay, we'll go to the risk committee. Oh, yeah, but I actually don't want to do it. Oh, you don't want to do it. That's different to no, we can't do it. Just because you're bloody lazy and you don't want to get off your backside and do it isn't the reason why we're not going to do it. Okay? Everything is possible. Give it a go. Technology companies in the US grew really, really rapidly, and they used something called a lightning jam session, and I did this with them, the Collins crew, um, where it's about moving forward, seeking clarity, not whether someone is right or wrong, and there's no discussion in the growth. When you finish the exercise in about 45 minutes, the growth you can get in business and organizations is tremendous. Okay? Because you can't say there is no right or wrong, you're getting clarity in the majority rules because the idea is it's better to do something than nothing. So you've all got, so, so who's written down something that they're going to do, have the courage to step up and do? Hey, take all the free advice you've got here. <laughs> promote yourself more. What do you mean by promote yourself more? Okay, so when you say, so people could think that's pretty selfish, I'm, it's all about me, but I think what you really mean when you say promote me, promote me is your passion for what you're doing. So, yeah, so, yeah, we promote passion. So, when I, the reason I'm, I'm on the board of Longitude is because I'm a carer. So I promote a lot about carers. Wendy's, my wife's on the board because she's a lung transplant recipient. We've got someone from GlaxoSmith, clients, someone from CSL, someone from whose auntie's had a transplant, who's in finance, but there's a passion behind it. Okay, you didn't come downstairs, did you? You didn't see the present. Okay, really amazing, because we're gonna come onto something that's, I want you to hold that. It's like you've been planted, but you haven't been planted. Who's gonna talk, who's put something that they're not gonna try to stop doing? Yeah. I think listening to voices in your own head comes with the Yeah, okay, belief. Believe in you, okay? You, you can't fake your belief, right? You've got to believe in what you do. So I run something, it's really weird being with a lung transplant, but I have this analogy and I go, unless someone's gonna die, I'm presuming that no one in this room is malicious, okay? Presuming no, presuming no one's gonna die, we can, give, we can give everything a try, right? We can give it a try for the next 60, 90 days. And if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, but at least we tried. Because it's better to do something than do nothing. If you do nothing, 
you're not going to change anything. Okay? Yes, it may be hard. It may have to be extra work to do. But believe in you. Go back to the cemetery. Okay? We're all fairly bright people in this room. Okay? We are bright people. Humans are naturally bright. But believe in you. And I'm pretty sure... What, what's, the, what's the negative thought you've had in your head about why you can't do something? Give me an idea. You'll upset others. Okay. Um, you'll upset others because you're not going to ask for permission. You're not going to tell them. They don't want to change. So because they don't want to change, you're going to stop growing. Yeah? So two things have to change. Are they the right people for what you want to do? Okay. You're letting someone else's self-doubt and someone else's lack of desire affect your ability to make a massive impact on this planet. Hmm. Interesting. What, well, we could grab a chair or a table, we could lie down and do a session on this, but we haven't got enough time. I'm going to get towed off. Uh, we need to have courage. Okay? So we talked a lot about courage. Um, there's a story in everything we tell. Um, downstairs, we talked about feeding 100 homes, 100 children? 100 families on holidays. And I said, if we had the time, we could actually sit down and work out there's a real passion behind that story because courage means we've got to be vulnerable. Courage means that sometimes we're going to have to do things slightly outside our comfort zone to do that. Um, and so for me, it just happens to be this little rubber duck called Banffy. Um, so Banffy is a place in Italy called Tuscany. And a few years ago, Wendy, we didn't think we were going to survive. So we decided to have a holiday of a lifetime. And it was a six-star holiday of a lifetime. And the idea being that she dies and her super and her insurance pays for the holiday. When we come back, so we spend money and 12 months later she dies. On the way back from Europe, we're sitting in first class and she goes, I've got good news and bad news. I went, okay, what's the good news? I said, the good news is I've had a holiday of a lifetime. I went, rock it. And here's my mind going, what's the bad news? I said, please don't die in the air because that's really going to stuff up how I get your insurance because you're not going to be in Australia. And she goes, I don't want to die. I want to live till I'm 85. And I'm going... No, no, you've got to bloody die. That was the agreement. You have to die. You have to die because I will pay for this. You must die. You must die. And all of a sudden, you get all these stewardesses running over. Is everything okay? And going, you know, she won't bloody die. Was well, that a problem? Yes, it's a problem because I've got this holiday to pay for and she's decided she won't die. So then I come back to Melbourne and I've got to get a job because I've got this bloody holiday to pay for now. That was a holiday of a lifetime and we want more of those holidays of a lifetime. But the problem is I'm a 40-year-old white male in Melbourne who's been positively discriminated about in in the front, in professional services sector. And despite being the best at what I do, being told, so you can't have the job because we've got to give it to a female who's inferior. who doesn't have the same expertise as you. That actually happens. So I drove up and down the Westgate Bridge, thinking that the only way I'm going to be able to get my wife and you know, ensure that my wife survives is to jump off that bridge, because then she gets my insurance. A bit weird that going on holiday, is she getting my insurance the other way? There's two problems with the bridge. One, I'm scared of heights. Two, my father-in-law put the fences up. Um, but there was other things I could have done. But the problem was, there's this little duck called Banffy in the car. And that Banffy reminded me of the opportunities we had in the life we had. And that, you know, to jump off a bridge is a bit cheating. I just need a bit of courage and a bit of, um, bit of balls to say, you know, I can do this. There's, there's alternative ways to think about this. Jumping off the bridge is a conventional way to solve the problems. We need to think a little bit unconventional. So I carry this little duck around with me, and I do literally carry this duck around with me 24-7. So when I go to network events and people go, what do you do, Gordon? I go, do you want to know what I do, or do you want to know why I carry a little yellow rubber duck in my pocket? So do you want to know why I'm a business coach, or do you want to know why I carry a yellow duck? Exactly the same thing's happening. It's about getting shit done. And it's about getting stuff done really quickly in a 90-day period, without knowers. So we've all got a story. So every single one of you in here who's related to a foundation has got a story. Has got a story about why you're involved in it. And it's not about money. It's because you want to make a difference. You want to make a difference to the world. You want to leave, leave a legacy. Yes? If you want to be on a foundation so it looks nice in your LinkedIn profile that you're on a board, 
right? Get off it. Because you're probably going to hurt the people that you're trying to support. I'm brutal. I'm very black and white. I'm very passionate. So we're going to have courage. So the last thing we're going to do on those three steps is have influence. Okay? Um, if you want a good laugh, just look at Tinder messages on Google. Oh, there's some fantastic stories up there. Um, and it's about how you influence people. And we talked about networking. We talked about you don't like going to network events. The whole reason I wrote the book was people talk about networking and how they actually have conversations. You've got to get into a phrase and you've got to get into a routine where people are compelled to seek you out. You've got to stop going to people and saying, I run this foundation, can you give me a million dollars? You've got to get into a routine and you've got to get to a position where your phone doesn't stop ringing because people want to be part of your journey. Because the, you're being very visible out there. You're being very attractive to people. You're being memorable to people for the right reasons. And you're influencing decisions. Today I'm a go-to expert. People ring me up and say, hey Gordon, do you know anyone that does high, you know, high rise window cleaning? Well actually I do, yeah, why? Because you live in a caravan. Oh actually I've just bought this property, I'm thinking of buying this property. All oh, right, you're thinking about, oh, why are you thinking about this, buying this property? Oh you know, I'm thinking about buying this property to do X, Y, Z. The next thing I know, I've just got this person in a meeting with all my network, giving them business and they're going, but I thought you just do business growth, Gordon. I said, no. But you asked me for a window cleaner, you actually didn't want a window cleaner? Right? You thought you did, but that's so far down the track. Right? What you actually needed was all this stuff sorted out first. So we're going to influence, and we're going to influence people very, very quickly. Because what's important about being influential is that you need to invest the time with the right people. Time is money. And there's nothing more valuable than your time. I did this exercise with a, um, a professional services group uh, with five people, and there was me in the room. In 45 minutes, we found $2.8 million of wasted time. $2.8 million of wasted time in 45 minutes. We found people were talking to the wrong people for the wrong reasons, and they were just wasting time. So we're going to work through this really quickly. This is an exercise that takes about a day and a half to do properly, and it changes rapidly. So on your piece of paper, you've got, um, where it says influence, you've got 15 numbers. What you need to do is think about the last 10 or so people, and now this exercise should take two minutes to do, the first part. If the people you've, the last 10 to 15 people you've met, and you've spoken about the business, about your foundation, if you think they're gonna be influential to where you wanna go in the three years, the thing you wrote down for clarity, I wanna put, put a Y next to their name. Just a Y, nothing else. So you need to write down the 15 people and then put a Y next to them. The reason it should take you no more than two minutes to write down 15 people is because if I got you to get your calendar out, your phone out, you had a look at your calendar in the last 60, 70 days, 60, 90 days, you've probably met 30 to 40 people. And if you can't remember 15 of those people that you've just met, it gives you an indication about the value of those, those conversations. How long have we got? How many? 10 minutes. Yeah, we'll get there. So we're probably not gonna get to 15, but let's see if we can get to five, at least. We all got at least five? Yep. Okay, so we're going to move across quickly because I've only got 10 minutes. Next to those that you've got the Y next to, if you think those people with a Y are also going to be influential to where you want to be in one year, I want to put a 1 next to the Y. So you should say Y1. Only those with a Y. So you should have some people with nothing, and some people with a Y, and some people with a Y1. Then... If you think those people with a Y1 are going to help you and going to be influential to where you are today to get you to where you want to be in one year, right now, to one year, put an A next to them. An A. So you should say Y1A. 
hopefully, so have you got, who's got a Y1A? Okay, how many have you got? Three. Out of how many? Seven. seven. Who else? Four, Four out of seven? Four out of seven? Two out of five, that's okay. Anyone else? Okay. Who's got some people with nothing? Okay. So just remember that. So why 1A? So this is a framework I use that's called Who's on Your Plane? Who's on Your Plane is about being in an airport, and we haven't got enough time to go through this, but first of all, we've got to think about the airport. Is your, is your air, you've got to get the ecosystem done, and the ecosystem is about getting you ready before you can go out and network. We often go out and network, but we haven't actually got ourselves ready to network yet, so that's an exercise we haven't got time to do. On a plane, why? used to be the most expensive type of ticket you could buy. The fully flexible, all mod cons, you know, it's a $10,000 trip to Sydney when you can get one for $99. Row A, row one, first class or business class. The Y1As are the most important people, okay? So think about a plane. If you were to get your book out, your calendar out, and have a look at your calendar, and you only had 150 people to fill on a plane, some of them would be in first class, some of them would be in business class, and some of them would be in economy. Yeah? And some people wouldn't even be on your plane. Just like in business, just like on a plane, I sometimes sit in business class, and sometimes I get upgraded to first class because they want to show me what first class is like. And if I don't keep on buying airfares, I get downgraded to business class, then I get downgraded to economy, and then I'm no longer a loyal client and I get thrown off. That's exactly what you're going to do with your connections to your foundation. You're going to work out who's your first class. So for Longitude, we have got some really important donors. And we can't show up for dinner with them on a more quarterly basis. Okay? We also have a research day where we invite everyone to come along. Those in first class, business class, and, um, and the economy. And some of those that we've thrown off the plane, but still, still around. Sometimes we invite people in those business class positions, the people who think we're influential, but we think we could do a little bit more to come to some of the events we had for our first class clients to say, this is what we really do. And they go, well, I actually quite like that. Often that relates around some business networking we do. Right? But we work out how we're communicating to everyone. So now we've gone from how we network into how we're marketing and how we're communicating. I'm not a marketing and communication expert by any means. We've got people who are specialists. Remember I said I do what I do? I do specialists around that. So if you were to go to this exercise and we were to do this properly with your organization and we sit down, you'd actually work out who's, go away. We'd actually, we'd actually work out who you're wasting time with. Because those that you haven't got anything next to are those the people that know is who are not going to be influential to what you've just written down to be the most critical thing you've got to do in the next 12 months. And if you're spending time with them, my question to you is why? Now you're going to have some people that you don't know where they sit. So you're going to give them a first class service. And if they don't give you back from that first class service, you're going to downgrade them. You never wait for them to be first class. You always give them, give them 100 points to start with and then take the points off. You never build up to 100 points. Right? As a client, and if I'm an accounting client and I only pay $1,500 a year in fees, all I get is a $1,500 service. All I'm going to do is introduce $1,500 type clients. If I know, if you give me a $10,000 service but my business is only worth $1,500, I'm going to start introducing, I know more about your business, I'm going to introduce more people. Make sense? Really simple. So, almost there, two minutes. We talked about today three things. Clarity. We talked about it's a journey, not to chase shiny objects, remembering what your X factor is, the human instinct. We talked about courage. The ability that we don't know what we don't know, but the ability to go away and try it, that we don't want to be in the cemetery. And we talked about influence, about investing time with the right people. I call this, let me rephrase that, people call this unconventional growth. Well, you know at the very beginning when I said I'm a bit of a square peg in a round hole? Is it unconventional? Is what I've just done unconventional? Right. Or are you doing something that in a way will encourage others to be on your journey for the long term, that connects to the outcomes, doesn't ask for money, and it brings people together for a common cause. 
invariably a social economic output. I don't think there's anything unconventional. The only unconventional thing here is that we're not being held hostage to the way we've done things in the past. And that those that want to be held hostage to the way things are done in the past, you're going to go, thank you very much, but you're not on my plane. This is the way we're going. Sometimes you're going to have to have really tough decisions on the board because those people want to be in the past. They don't want to make the effort to go forward. That's the same with supporters. It's the same in business. Nothing I've done today is unconventional. The only thing that's going to be unconventional, the only thing that's going to be unconventional is if you go back and start acting conventionally like this. Because other people are going, oh, they're doing something different. You know, it's only different to the point when everyone else is doing it, then it's no longer different. Four minutes spare. I know the bell's early. Any questions? It's like having an auction here. Anyone a bid? No, no, no. And as soon as it finishes, everyone comes up and talks to me. Any questions? So a couple of freebies. You've got the book. Um, on my website, you can book a chat with me. I do encourage you to book a chat with me. Um, one of the things we had from a lady that's not here this year, I was actually going to ask if she was. Um, I said, give me a call afterwards. And she gave me a call. And she was a CEO of, of a foundation. And she had a problem with the board because the board, she had to build the strategy, but the board would get involved in their strategy. And we sat down. I actually didn't do a lot. What I did was just listen to what her, her issues from a third party. And we worked out the way that she's going to come back to the board to be accountable. And coffee costs cost her six dollars it took 45 minutes that board went away built a strategy came back and given the ceo complete control to implement that strategy even better every single board member is accountable so when i say if you want to have a chat with me have a chat with me i really mean it okay there's only one condition it has to be done by the end of april after april you're going to pay for it simple as that I'm here for the rest of the day, so come and chat to me. Thank you.